Okay, let's talk a bit about the, the, the change in our workforce. Um, you mentioned having uh, self-sufficiency staff in how many counties? 16 counties? 16 that including counties, New Lego? Including Okay, so 15 other counties yes. outside of this building, mm -hmm. we have staff doing self-sufficiency programming. Maybe you can explain, and both of you can talk about this, the, the shift in our, in our mentality of how our staff work, knowing we have to have a mobile workforce, for example, out in, out in areas that are very remote, very rural. Yeah. Well, I might just uh, start by saying one of the realizations was if we were going to go out to other counties, in order to afford a building for each one of those right. counties is beyond what we wanted to do, and it meant that we would have far less money to be able to do sure. the services that we wanted. So that was our first approach to be able to say, can we do a mobile workforce and deliver our services in a new and unique manner? So that's really where self-sufficiency took off in a whole new direction once we left Nuego County. Right, and, and it probably just wouldn't even be a good use of resources. No, right. I mean, not at all. Uh, this is a really unique, and I we use that term often of talking about Trina Arthur. We really are. It's a unique cir circumstance of geography and everything else, and you know, having a small rural county that happened to have enough. Uh, infrastructure to, to, for a place like this to even blossom. Mm -hmm. It's a rare, rare thing. Yeah. So most small rural counties don't have a True North. No. Um, and in fact, we've yet to find a, an agency like True North anywhere else that we can steal ideas from. Yeah. So to, to, to duplicate it in every other county, this is, that's a dumb idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, with the mobile workforce, technology has been an absolute necessity, as you would imagine. Um, and it has really helped us to improve our efficiencies in service delivery um, because we are again, unique enough to have um, a database, our CRM d database, which is the customer relationship management database. Um, and so our staff who are out in the field completing the home visits and um, you know, integrating the services into the community are able to you know, record all of that to provide a real-time analysis of, of the data that they're collecting in regards to the, the clients and the community that we're serving. Are they working on phones? Are they working on laptops or like tablets? All, uh, all three? Yeah, uh, so they, yeah, they definitely have a smartphone, um, but most of their work and data entry is on their laptop computer. Okay. Um, they have a 24-hour protocol to where all of that data has to be entered in immediately oh. so that we here back at the home base can um, pull that data up at any time um, look at you know the trends we might be seeing with the goals that they're setting, the barriers that our clients are facing, um, and be able to immediately report that to the state or, or, or the other people that are interested in, in what we're collecting. I, I, this, this to me is really fascinating. What's, what's an example of some interesting trends you can pull out of this data that, that, that we can actually use to shift money or shift you know staff? Sure. Um, so one of the one of the data points we can pull out is from one of our other assessments that we do, which is our Barriers to Employment Success Inventory. And that really um, provides us with um, local level barriers to employment. Um, so for example, for our Northwest region last year, um, the BSEE has five different profiles that are identified as being the most prevalent barriers for the um, individual county that we're talking about. So, um, you know, at any given time, we can kind of see at what level that barrier, which barrier is the most prevalent. So if it's, um, you know, budgeting um, is the biggest barrier, then that really allows us to, to have the baseline to start that conversation with local, um, you know, Michigan Works um, agencies or, or other people that are engaged in kind of that employment um, the employment issues. Um, we can also pull um, like the most prevalent goals for a county. So one of most of our counties are very rural. So oftentimes we see transportation as the right. biggest barrier um, for a lot of our clients. So we can you know kind of see how that's ebbing and flowing um, through the data that's being collected. Um, it also tracks how many home visits our staff are completing. Um, so last year we completed over 2,000 home visits in the nine counties we were serving. So we're also able from a management perspective to ensure that efficiencies are being followed right. through as far as job responsibilities and tasks. Um, things like that. This is cool, and I, I'm not an overly techie guy, although half, a lot of my job involves it, so I've had to learn it. So, but to me, that's again really fascinating that we we have um, 
we have self-sufficiency specialists out in the field uh, entering data and when they meet with the client within 24 hours the data is getting entered mm -hmm. and then you can access that at any time and then look at whatever county and say obviously the big issue in this county um, in, in preventing people from um, attaining employment is education so what can we do to help that or whatever I mean, pick any pick any one thing that that to me is pinpointing that's amazing great use of technology that I don't understand um, to, to address a problem that I don't understand that's pretty cool yeah and it really brings um, you know that the conversation to those communities that don't have the capacity to collect that data so it's really um, an amazing you know gift that True North can bring to the communities we're serving and saying you know these are the most um, prevalent barriers that we're seeing in, the, in your community and to start those conversations toward building solutions and then be, you know because we can be fluid in our approach um, we can take that data and actually you know we can move with it we can make changes to our programming or whatever um, and that fluidity I think is key so you you, talk, you talked earlier about uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, w one of the failures we had in our in our data collection that you noticed we weren't achieving one of our goals. Talk about that. Yeah, so one of the great things about having um, the data collection process in our own database through the CRM is that ability to look at real-time data. And because of that, we're always able to, you know, kind of follow a continuous quality improvement model with our program. Um, so if we need to adjust our sales midway, we have the capacity to do so. So as much fun as we have celebrating our successes, we also understand that we need to accept our failures with equal discipline. Um, so one of the... How very mature of us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So um, one of the failures that we recognized through our data collection process was in regards to the third assessment that we do. The third assessment we do is um, called an EQ5D, which is a health assessment, and it just allows our staff to collect a, a nice snapshot of the health condition of our clients. So it's pretty broad. It looks at five different areas. And so then the, the data we, we, we collected shows that we weren't making much of an impact with that. Correct. And what did we do about it? Just to back up a little bit with our other assessments, we do a pre and post observational data analysis. Um, so from our self-sufficiency matrix, we know that from the pre and post data, we were able to increase general self-sufficiency by 40%, okay. which is pretty great. Yeah. So with the health assessment, um, yeah, we, we weren't able to show any improvement benchmarks from pre and post intervention. Okay. So that really led us to talk more seriously with some local collaboratives occurring here in New Diego County. Um, and so right now we actually have a pilot program occurring with Spectrum Health um, and a couple other local um, agencies that are also collaborating with that program. And our self-sufficiency specialists are now getting certified as community health workers. Um, and so hopefully, you know, that will lay the foundation to start making the necessary improvements um, regarding those, those social determinants of health and, sure. you know, some of the health issues that we were seeing. How do you feel 28 years later seeing where we're at now and how we're doing things versus when we started? I, I think it's exceptional. When you think about it, the, I think one of the strengths of True North is that we are a growing organization. Mm -hmm. We never are quite satisfied with what we're doing and we're hoping to always improve. So it's great to watch uh, the growth that we've had and exciting to see where the direction will lead us in the future. Um, it makes me really, really proud to work for the uh, for True North Agency, I do. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and to see, again, 16 years, the, yeah. the change. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine 28 years seeing the change. It's got to be uh, immensely satisfying. <laughs> it is. Thanks for watching uh, the second uh, edition of the pilot or reading it and watching the video to go with it. And we hope we see you uh, in further editions of the pilot. Thanks.